This is from the Gospel according to St. John. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. No, they're just talking about those bad people in the first century, right? Those other people. That's what they're talking about, right? Just those people who were bad who lived at that particular time, right? This is Hosea. God is speaking to the prophet. When the tribe of Ephraim spoke, there was trembling, and it was exalted within Israel. But when they offended God by Baal, one of the false gods, one of their idols, they died. But now they are sinning more and more, crafting idols from melted silver. Their idols are made with the most exacting skill, all of it the work of craftsmen. But it's okay to have idols. I mean, yeah, thou shalt have no other gods before me, but come on. All gods are made up, aren't they? They're all giant spaghetti monsters in the sky. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, if some of the people of Ephraim made beautiful things out of silver and worshipped them, what harm could that be? People say about them, they offer human sacrifice and kiss calf-shaped idols. And of course, it's not just the tribe of Ephraim. And it's not just the Jews of the first century. Most people who claim to be serious Catholics that I know don't really serve God. They have an idol. That idol is power. They want control. They want to destroy the enemy. Power they worship even higher than reason, rational thought. They will sacrifice reason if they can get power and if they can continue to hate. Now, maybe that's not you. Maybe that's not your family. Maybe you're not like the Jews who rejected Jesus or the Gentiles who rejected Jesus. Maybe you're not like the people from Hosea's time, the Ephraimites who sacrificed human beings. But the thing you value most is your God. And so if money or power or sex or fame or prestige or what have you is the most important thing in your life, you will sacrifice other things to it, even other people. Maybe not by killing them, but by not caring for them, by rejecting them, by not spending time with them, what have you. This is a story of human nature. It's not just a story of some weird people with strange names who lived thousands of years ago. But what happens to these people according to God? when he talks to Hosea. What happens to these people who practice human sacrifice? Therefore, therefore meaning because of all this, because of their idolatry and their human sacrifice to false gods, therefore they will be like morning clouds, like early morning dew that evaporates, like chaff blown away from the threshing floor or like smoke from a chimney. There will be no permanence they are sacrificing eternity for this passing, what? Passing glory, passing vanity, this passing interest in the false gods of this world. And they're like the morning dew that evaporates, the fog that burns off, the smoke from a chimney that blows away. Now maybe that's how you think of life for everybody, but there's more to life than that, unless you deliberately focus on the passing ephemeral things, unless you put something else higher than whoever or whatever created the universe and came into his own, but his own would not accept him. That's the story of the Bible in a nutshell, that quote from St. John. And it's the story of our lives and the story, sometimes of our own souls, certainly it's the story of 2023 and much of human history. This stuff is relevant in a way that your youth pastor might not quite fully mean. It's relevant at a level that's rather disturbing, actually, because this is who we are. And when God did appear on earth, when he did come to his own, when he who created everything came to his creation, we tortured him and killed him because he kept pointing out to us 
that we weren't what we ought to be, and we couldn't stand that. 